walking here in Mitchelland and who do you see? There he is, Peter Schmeichel! There you go, eh? <laughs> How's that? Jesus the... Christ, you're tall. Oh, come on. Being the main man between the sticks at Manchester United is understandably one of the biggest and most daunting tasks in world football. Since the dawn of the Premier League, United have had roughly 23 first-team goalkeepers on their books. However, to this very day, only three have proven themselves to be a cut above the rest. Peter Schmeichel, Edwin van der Sar and David De Gea. Leaving trophies aside, a strong case could be made that De Gea is or was technically a better goalkeeper than the others in terms of pure ability. However, it is extremely difficult to leave trophies aside when referring to Manchester United. Of course, the teams that each keeper played in played a large role in this, but we can't really escape the facts here. In any case, his career is very much still active. Who knows what the future holds? And before anyone asks, I am well aware that John O'Shea is indeed United's best ever keeper. The stats don't lie, you know. To give the others a chance, I've chosen to exclude him from this comparison. It just wouldn't be fair to the others. So in this video, we'll be focusing on Edwin van der Sar and Peter Schmeichel, both Champions League winners and multiple Premier League winners with United. However, at the end of the day, seeing as how you've clicked on this video, we probably all have the same questions in mind. Who is better for Manchester United and why? Yo, what's going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. If you like the video, you know what to do. If you don't, yeah, I mean, you know, free country, man. Before we get started, I feel I need to get this out the way straight off the bat. Both of these players were absolutely phenomenal goalkeepers throughout their careers. Regardless of the outcome, I would easily pick either of these two in my team on any given day. This video is just to have a bit of fun and spark a conversation. You may very well feel differently. And if you do, please feel free to call me out in the comments and also let me know why. Okay, so here's how this video is going to work. Out of interest, we'll first give a brief overview of who these players were and where they came from, after which we'll go into the comparison and end off with our final conclusion. And one last thing before we get into it, please note that if you're on a schedule and need to save some time, uh, because it's, uh, it's a goalkeeper video and uh, saving time and... Never mind, it's stupid. Huh? This video is timestamped, so you can skip ahead to the sections you're most interested in. Right, let's start this off with Peter Schmeichel. Born in 1963 in Glorsexer, Denmark, the Great Dane only began his professional footballing career at the age of 24. Before that, while playing on a part-time basis, he had to take on several odd jobs to earn a living. He started his professional career off in 1987 with Brombu and impressed just about everyone, even reaching the 1991 UEFA Cup semi-finals with them. To this day, that is the furthest that any team from Denmark has progressed in any European club competition. It's quite an achievement. As you can imagine, Schmeichel was hot property at that point in his career, so much so that Manchester United came knocking, signing him up for £505,000 at the onset of the 1991-92 season of the First Division, a deal that Ferguson once described as the bargain of the century. This was just one year prior to the introduction of the Premier League and Schmeichel was 28 years old at this point and just about entering his prime. Eight glorious years later and the Great Dane had cemented himself as a Manchester United and Premier League legend. We'll get into some key stats in a bit, but long story short, the man was something special. Standing at 6 foot 3, his athleticism for his size was a key asset for United. Within his arsenal was a star jump technique for covering large areas of the goal, long throws for launching counter attacks, a booming voice to organize the defense, and a commanding presence in his penalty area. And I haven't even mentioned the 1992 UEFA European Championship, which Schmeichel won with Denmark. Well, each Denmark player played out of their skin in that tournament, Schmeichel was undoubtedly the star. He remains to this day the only goalkeeper in history to be named the player of the tournament since the introduction of the award in the 1984 Euros. But seeing as this video is only taking his time at United into account, this information will not be used in the final comparison. Moving along, Schmeichel left United in 1999 following their incredible treble winning season and eventually retired from the game altogether in 2003 at 39 years of age. In the six years that followed Schmeichel's departure, United ended up winning the Premier League three more times. However, there was a rather noticeable drop in the standards of goalkeeping for the club. No offence to those who stepped in, which include the likes of Mark Bosnich, Fabian Bartes and Tim Howard, but something really needed to be done if United wanted to claw their way back to the top. In steps, Edwin van der Sar. Van der Sar's story is slightly different to that of Schmeichel's. While Schmeichel got his big break later than most in the world of professional football, Van der Sar had a much more successful start to his career, although he too had a bit of a late start. 
Born in 1970 in Vorhout, Netherlands, he began his footballing career with Ajax only a few months before his 20th birthday. This was after being brought into the club by Louis van Hull in 1990. By 1992, he was the first choice keeper for Ajax and went on to collect a very impressive trophy haul with the Dutch Giants during his nine year stay at the club. Four Eredivisie titles, three KNVB Cups and a Champions League victory in 1995 as Ajax beat Milan by a goal to nil in the final. All the while, van der Sar was proving himself to be one of the very best goalkeepers in Europe. In fact, in 1995, he was selected as the best goalkeeper in Europe by UEFA. Standing at 6'6", six six, van der Sar was a tall, athletic and calm, yet physically dominant player. His reach and intelligence meant that he was able to deal with crosses into his area to great effect and his incredible reflexes and coordination allowed him to make saves with just about every part of his body. However, arguably his biggest trait and one of the main reasons that he was able to have such a long career and adapt to modern times was the fact that he was very proficient with the ball at his feet. By 1999, at 28 years of age, van der Sar's stock was incredibly high and Manchester United were very interested in having him be Schmeichel's long-term replacement. However, he was more convinced of Juventus' project and move over to Turin for £5 million. Unfortunately, after a promising start at Juve, his form took a dip and by 2001, he was eventually replaced by Jean-Louis Buffon. From then on, a move to Fulham for £7 million followed and it was only in 2005 that Manchester United finally got their man, securing van der Sar's signature for a reported £2 million. Ajax, to Juventus, to Fulham, to Manchester United. One of those is not like the others. Moving along, United weren't getting the same man that they were after six years prior. At 34 years of age and being signed on a two-year contract, van der Sar was only brought in to be a stopgap, just a short-term solution until United found a younger, long-term replacement. Six years and seven major trophies later, and that just was not the case, was it? And finally, an incredible career was brought to a close after he retired from the game at 40 years of age in 2011. Okay, so now that we're all on the same page, let's compare the two. Remember, for each comparison criteria, we are only looking into their time at Manchester United. No international competitions will be considered either. Each player will be compared based on six separate criteria, three of which will be purely stats-based and entirely objective, while the last three will have to be a tiny bit more subjective. We'll be looking into their individual stats, individual awards, team awards, physical and technical attributes, their impact on the team when they arrived, and finally, their defensive organization and leadership. So taking all that into consideration, here are the key stats we'll be looking at for each keeper. Seeing as Schmeichel played about 66 more games than van der Sar, we cannot look at their stats directly for a comparison. So the main stats that we want to be paying attention to here are the bottom two. The clean sheet percentage, meaning how often each keeper kept a clean sheet in relation to the matches they played, and secondly, the goals conceded per minute. In both cases, van der Sar comes out on top with these superior numbers. This is further demonstrated by the fact that to this day, Edwin van der Sar holds the record for the goalkeeper with the longest amount of time played without conceding in Premier League history, 1,311 minutes or 14 games in the 2008-09 season of the Premier League. Of course, these stats have a lot to do with the men that sat in front of them, but for the purposes of this category, we're gonna look past that. After all, Schmeichel wasn't playing with slouches in front of him either. So this one goes to van der Sar. On to individual achievements. Despite van der Sar having earned more PFA Team of the Year appearances, Schmeichel comes out on top in this category. I won't lie, I did have to double check that last stat. It's kinda hard to imagine that Schmeichel only made one Team of the Year appearance. This is especially considering the fact that he remains to this day the only goalkeeper in Premier League history to win the Premier League Player of the Season award, an award he won for the 1995-96 season. Strangely enough, he was not chosen in the Team of the Year that season, with David James filling that spot. I'm not the only one that finds that a bit weird, right? Anyway, on to team achievements. If we were comparing each of these players based on their entire careers, this graphic would look slightly different. Some might even argue that van der Sar would take the W based purely on the fact that he won the Champions League with Ajax as well. All the same, Schmeichel won quite a bit more than the Dutchman while playing at Old Trafford, and he also won the 92 Euros, but of course we're not considering that here. In any case, Schmeichel takes this one too. Now comes to the categories that are a bit more contentious and are a bit more difficult to score based on stats. These require the good old contextual eye test. 
In terms of physical and technical attributes, like I've already stated thus far, there are several attributes that each possessed and excelled at. It would be incredibly difficult to say that Schmeichel had better reflexes than Van der Sar or vice versa, because how do you really measure that? Realistically, you'd need to compare them on a save-by-save -save basis. To give another example, I'm sure that many would likely agree that Van der Sar was probably the superior of the two with ball at feet and was better at distribution in that respect. However, Schmeichel had a cannon of an arm and was capable of making up for any shortcomings that he may have had when using his feet in that regard, bearing in mind he wasn't all that bad with his feet either. So who was better at distribution overall? It's a tough question that would require detailed passing completion stats whereby throws are taken into account. Sadly, all of this information is rather hard to come by without watching decades of footage to note that down. So with this category, we seem to have hit a bit of a roadblock. Although what I will say is that Schmeichel was a much more active goalkeeper during his time at Old Trafford. A daunting physical presence with great shot stopping ability, brilliant in one-on-ones, positioning, ball handling, etc. All things that Van der Sar was also great at by the way. However, and this is a very important point, United got Schmeichel in the sweet spot of his career at 28 years of age. His physical and technical prime. And remember, his Dutch adversary in this comparison was signed at 34 years of age. While Van der Sar gave United some incredible years, I would think that most would agree that had United signed him in 1999 in his physical prime as intended, he would likely have had much more to give. Which is a bit mad considering what he did. This is a hypothetical, of course, but as for physical attributes, taking only their time at United into account, I would say that Schmeichel takes this one. Now onto the impacts that each player had on the team. This is more to do with how they changed the dynamic of the team in the first few years of their respective tenures. Again, this one is perhaps a bit subjective, but let's look at the facts first. Coincidentally, both Schmeichel and Van der Sar arrived at Old Trafford one year before United reclaimed the top division title of English football, acting as the final piece of the puzzle that led to league glory. In the case of Schmeichel, it was one season prior to United winning the league for the first time in 26 years. In the case of Van der Sar, it was one season prior to United ending what looked like it was going to be years of dominance by a Jose Mourinho-led Chelsea. However, in this case, again, I will have to go with Peter Schmeichel. When Schmeichel joined United, he played a large role in revolutionising not only goalkeeping at Old Trafford, but goalkeeping in England. His leadership at the back and communication to not only his defenders but his entire team was unrivaled at the time. Many would even argue that he helped in moulding the counter-attacking approach to the game that United adopted early in the Premier League era with his long throws and overall distribution. His star jump technique was something that had never really been seen in England and his prowess in one-on-ones was simply incredible. Van der Sar had an immediate effect on United and was clearly an unquestionable success at the club, but if we're looking at sheer team impact, this one goes to the Great Dane in my eyes. And finally, in terms of leadership and defensive organisation, surprise surprise, another subjective one. While both were commanding, this has more to do with the players that they had playing in front of them and how they were able to organise them. By several accounts, Schmeichel was an incredibly loud presence on the pitch. I mean, if you just watch this guy, this was extremely apparent. If something was wrong at the back, he would be the first to let you know. On the other hand, Van der Sar was a much calmer presence, still one to let his defence know what was what, but far less inclined to be as consistently loud and vocal throughout the match as Schmeichel was. Two different approaches to defensive organisation, both extremely effective if we go back to the stats and what they achieved. It may be worth noting that Schmeichel had to acclimatise to several defender combinations in Steve Bruce and Gary Pallister, and later Jopp Storm and Ronnie Jensen, and a few others in between. Whereas Van der Sar only really had to deal with Rio Ferdinand and Emanuel Vidic for the most part. Does that mean that Schmeichel was better than Van der Sar because he adapted to more than one defensive partnership? Maybe. But who's to say that Van der Sar couldn't have done the same had Ferdinand and Vidic been replaced? I guess it's an arbitrary category for comparison, but one that I poured quite a bit of time into while looking at different angles of how a winner could be found. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a compelling enough reason to give one the dub over the other. I even looked at what their teammates had to say. However, the only defenders that played with both of them at Old Trafford were Wes Brown and Gary Neville. Unfortunately, neither of them has gone on record choosing one over the other. That I'm aware of, at least. So disappointingly, all signs point towards a draw. So let's go to the final points tally. From this partly subjective, partly objective, but fully wacky comparison made by a random dude on the internet, the winner here is Peter Schmeichel. Of course this isn't a completely one-to-one -one comparison, seeing as one of these players played for United for a longer amount of time compared to the other. 
Taking that into account, as well as the fact that each of these players had rather different playstyles, off the bat this was always going to be a difficult comparison to make. If we were comparing each of these players based on their entire careers, this entire comparison may have looked different. Personally, I grew up watching Van der Sar every week at United and only really caught the back end of Schmeichel's career, but by that time he was already playing for Aston Villa. So if anything, I would be more inclined to choose Van der Sar in this debate, as I did have first-hand experience watching him on a week-to-week -week basis. However, based on everything I've read, all the footage I've seen of this man over the years, all the things I've heard people say about him, I couldn't help but favor Schmeichel for several of these categories, but I mean that's just my opinion. Like I said in the intro, this was just a fun topic to look into and of course comprised of my own discretion for many of these outcomes. Please feel free to let me know if some of my reasoning was ass and comment on who you think was the better goalkeeper for Manchester United. Anyway, that's all from me today, really enjoyed making this one, hope you guys enjoyed it, hope you're staying safe, cheers and I'll catch you on the next one.